Hey everybody, this is John from Code Planet, back with another video. Uh, the other day I did one on essential Vim plugins, and then as luck would have it, like a day after I did it, I discovered this new set of plugins that has really, really made me a lot more efficient with Vim. Uh, and so today I just want to cover pretty quickly how to get set up with uh, auto completion for Vim using this plugin, You Complete Me. And specifically getting the auto completion set up for JavaScript by combining you complete me with this plugin turn for vim uh, So these have a little bit more of a uh, involved install, but it's not too bad uh, And they provide some really really great functionality So the first one you want to go ahead and install is turn for vim. It's at a github.com slash m a r i j n h slash and then t e r n underscore f o r underscore v i m uh, so if you're using like Pathogen or something like that, you can go ahead and just clone the repo into your bundle folder. Um, and then the only thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, after you clone the repo, go into Vim bundle, uh, actually Vim bundle and then turn for Vim. Uh, and we can see here that there is a package.json. So it's really similar to the node apps that we've been working with. Um, it's got turn as an NPM dependency. So after you install it, you'll just want to go into here and do an NPM install. Uh, and that'll get the dependencies all locked in in there. Uh, and then the other one, you complete me. Uh, that one has really, really great documentation on GitHub. So you can pick your operating system. Like went, I went to Mac here. Um, and then I just went ahead and moved into my uh, bundle directory, did a clone of the entire repo. Uh, and then I just ran this uh, dot slash install dot pi. Um, they've got really, really great instructions here. Uh, and let me know in the comments if anybody has a difficult time installing it. Um, but I just wanted to walk through really quick what it does. Uh, it's pretty nice. So if I go into, let's see, this folder here, and I make a new one, Vim2, and then I just, let's say, like touch a file like index.js or something like that. Uh, I'll make this a little bigger. Um, so I can go into this file now and I can get this really nice autocomplete. And this is not Mac Vim or a GUI Vim. This is right in my terminal. Uh, so I can do something like var, and we can already see it there. Uh, as I go to define it, um, it's popping up with some suggestions. Uh, none of them are exactly what I'm going for, except for r, which I already typed. Um, so you know, var r equals, and we'll make this like array, one, two, three, something like that. And then if we wanted to go in here, we do an r dot. Uh, it'll start bringing up all of the JavaScript array uh, methods. And so it's doing some static analysis, which is really helpful. Um, you know, it's got all the different things that you might need in here. Uh, so as far as hotkeys go, you don't need any hotkey to bring these up. They'll just come up on their own. Uh, and you can just keep typing if you want to skip over it. There's no problem with that. Uh, and then moving through them, uh, I was having, let's see, I just screwed up the whole screen there. Uh, I was having like some problems kind of like we're seeing here with the arrow keys. So what I've been using, uh, let me just redo this equals one, two, three. Uh, what I've been using instead of the arrow keys is I've been using control P and N. So holding down control, um, man, I don't know why it's doing that to my screen. Let me... Oh, I see what's going on here. Oh, okay. This is actually kind of neat. I had missed this. Um, so it looks like what's going on is it's opening a new Vim buffer with the documentation about the method that I'm going to use. So let me close this again um, and change this and we'll go control P. Okay, that is cool. So uh, let me make it a little bit more visible, maybe something like that. Uh, so while I'm in here looking at these array methods, it looks like every one that I go over, it'll replace it with some documentation, which is actually kind of nice. Um, so yeah, if I wanted to use map or something like that, uh, you know, I'd control uh, N or control P up to it. Uh, and then I, you know, start typing like this. And I've got uh, up here on the screen some documentation. It's a function. It creates a new array with the results of a calling provided function on every element in the array. Um, anyway, it's just some, like, pretty nice autocomplete um, that I've been liking a lot. Uh, and it, it's definitely one of those plugins that gives Vim more of that, like, full, um, you know, text editor feel. Uh, plus one, something like that. Uh, and then I could do like, you know, var foo equals. Uh, anyway, so then you can go ahead and close that. So I, I've been finding this really nice. I've just started playing around with it. I think there's a lot more I want to go through the docs and learn more about. But just kind of having some of that static analysis is really, really cool. There's other stuff with the turn plugin that I haven't really looked into yet. So if I do like uh, R and then maybe I'm hovering over it, I think you can run something like turn. And then we can see down at the bottom, we can do like, where is it defined? So if I hit enter, you can see it take, took me up here. 
Um, this is really great. Um, similarly, let's see if I run turn, um, we can see the docs again for anything. I don't think I have documentation on that one, but if I was doing like, I think if I was doing like, you know, if I had the array, turn doc, yeah, there it goes. So it'll bring up the documentation right here in Vim, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot more to check out there, but I just thought I'd go ahead and mention that those plugins are pretty awesome, pretty helpful. Uh, so once again, that was you complete me, uh, and then also turn for Vim. Those are really great. I'll try to put them in the show notes. I uh, hope that helped.